According to the ancient Sumerian writings, the Anunnaki are those who from heaven to earth came, and they are characterized as royal blood that descended from the sky. In various contexts, the Anunnaki are also referred to as the fallen angels or the Nephilim. According to the study of comparative religions, the book of Genesis, which was written around 600 BCE, is thought to have been extrapolated from the Sumerian epic of creation, which is thought to have taken place between 6000 and 8500 BCE. The records also provide a wealth of information describing the Anunnaki in the role as watchers. These descriptions can be found in later biblical texts written by Daniel and Jubilees. According to the findings of some experts, the ancient Sumerians occasionally described these deities in the role of proprietors of mineral extractions from Earth. These deities reportedly used the human race as a means to replenish vital resources on the angel's home world. The first known written document that makes reference to organized sons of God is called the Anunnaki, who were a heavenly council of seven. This may be taken as the beginning of human history. According to historical traditions, the Anunnaki were the gods and goddesses who convened on occasion in the skies to inadvertently decide the fate of mankind even if it was not due to their own actions. In the book of Psalms, a mention to a group of people known as the Nephilim is made, and it is said that Abraham's father Terah was one of those who served the angels who had fallen from heaven. In the stories of Zechariah Sitchin about planet X, Nibiru, the twelfth planet, and its return to over a long elliptical orbit, the Anunnaki are associated with the fate of Earth. In the Babylonian creation myth, they are the children of Anu and Ki. Zechariah Sitchin's stories of planet X, Nibiru, the twelfth planet. The Hopi tribe has a similar belief in a prophesy that is called the Blue Kachina, which describes a period when the star people will return to Earth to oversee the transformation of the life cycle. When investigating the enigmatic items left behind by the Anunnaki, one would be surprised to find that they have a striking resemblance to the Egyptians' conceptions of their gods and goddesses. The attributes of angels, the solar disk, and the accounts of the afterlife that are found in the Book of the Dead all give the distinct impression that an ancient Sumerian culture was influential. It is not entirely clear how the Egyptians came into contact with the Sumerians or which civilization came into existence first. This topic is also the subject of much discussion. By examining Mesopotamian temples and their distinct relation to mastabas of the first and second Egyptian dynasties, archaeological evidence does suggest that both cultures may have coexisted during a period between 3000 and 5000 years ago. This can be inferred from the fact that there is evidence of both cultures during this time period. Although there are a number of Egyptian artifacts that bear concepts of the Sumerian civilization, there are also signs suggesting that Egypt may have affected Sumer while they were in the process of unifying. The Egyptians created foreign trade routes, obtained rich stones, and designed sophisticated constructions much before the Sumerians did, as shown by historical timelines. However, the date of the events that took place in the Sumerian epics establishes a time well before the colonization of Nineveh 8,000 years ago by a society that bears comparable features as both the Egyptians and the Sumerians. This culture is known as the Assyrians. <laughs>